Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Today I will be evaluating Sage 50 Cloud Accounting Software for the Fit Small Business Case Study Chapter 1, which just covers general information. So I'm going to be basing the case study on the test drive that's available from the Sage 50 Cloud Accounting website. Um, so Sage 50 Cloud Accounting, despite its name, is actually a desktop software um, with some features that allow you to access some of your information from the cloud for invoicing, etc. Uh, they do not offer a trial subscription, um, but they do offer this test drive, which is a cloud hosted version of Sage 50 just in order to give uh, potential users um, a little bit of experience with their program. So that's what we'll be using. Um, I've signed up for the test drive. I've opened it. Uh, it's good for 30 days. So um, here's the opening screen. Um, it reminds me very, very much of QuickBooks desktop. Um, so uh, we have a menu across the top. There is just a ton of ton of functions and features available. This is very powerful, I can tell from the outset. Um, also a little bit uh, cluttered, not quite as, as clean as some of the cloud accounting software, but this is also, I can tell, going to be very powerful. Very similar to QuickBooks Desktop again. Again, uh, QuickBooks Desktop is very powerful, but it's not the most user-friendly thing in the world. Um, so on the side here, we have our customer center and within the customer center it actually gives you kind of a workflow and then you can click in the workflow wherever you you want to be so that's kind of a easy way perhaps to find uh, the feature you're looking for so we have the customer center um, the vendor center so it may not call it the vendor center in the software here that's what I call it because that's what QuickBooks desktop calls it uh, we have our inventory center we have our payroll center so it looks like for this test drive they've already they've activated their payroll software so uh, the normal software won't come with the payroll already activated um, we have a banking center um, the payment center there seems to be some sort of error with it um, so I'm going to assume this is where you receive your uh, electronic payments um, through their processing software but there seems to be an error with it in their test drive so not a big deal. Um, good, and then we've got some shortcuts down here. So it looks like pretty good software. Uh, so let's get started. Um, the first tasks just deal with the basic company information. And so if we go to maintain, and here we can find uh, company information. Okay, so here we can, it looks like name, address, telephone, website, email, federal and ID number, um, the form of business, accounting method, um, looks like they've activated payroll. Okay, so good. So this is all sample data that is just included in their test drive. And so all that looks good. So I'm going to go to my scorecard here. And so, yeah, we can fill out all the basic information. It's simple enough. Once you find, it took me a little while to find that company information under the maintain menu. Um, I don't see a fiscal year there. I'm sure this program allows for a fisc, you know, allows for a fiscal year. Um, but let's see how hard it is to find that. Okay, so let's close out of this. So lots of, of different features here, lots of different preferences we can set. So I've done a little research. It actually appears that you have to set your fiscal year um, when you establish your new company. It's since And this company has already been established in the test drive. Um, and it's very hard to change your fiscal year after you've established the company, um, which is actually fine because that's not something uh, that you can change without IRS permission. Um, so that is fine. So you'll set it when you establish your company originally. So I've done some research on setting up the classes 
and the uh, locations and uh, we can do it in Sage 50 Cloud. It is very old school. Um, so let's go to maintain and let's go to our uh, default information and then general ledger. And so we set up departments by using uh, specific account number structures. Um, so here, so the GL account, so this would be your basic, like the account number you give to cash would be four digits long. And then your next two digits are going to be your department. Well, let's change that to our class. Uh, we want, according to our case study here, we want to set up a, uh, um, we want to set up three classes for HVAC plumbing and administrative. Well, we're just going to call this classes. Or class so that gives us a two digit length um, we're not going to need that many so I'm just going to put it down to one digit so now we have to remember um, that HVAC is going to be one plumbing is going to be two and administrative is going to be three okay so that's we just kind of make a note of that and memor uh, memorize it and then we can set up our location we have two locations, New York and Delaware, and it'll be the same thing. It'll be, um, you know, the number one will designate New York as the location. Number two will designate Delaware as the location. So whenever we enter a uh, number for an account, we need to indicate that for this first digit here after the GL number is our class number and the next digit over here is our location number. So very old school, not at all user friendly, but that is how you can track it. Okay, so it's giving us an issue because it's already set up with a different account structure. So this is how we would do it if we had to do it. I'm just gonna cancel it and we won't worry about it um, for the, uh, we won't worry about it for the case study, but it is able to do it. Um, very old school, uh, not at all user friendly, but it can do it. So I'm going to give it points for that. Okay, uh, let's look more at the chart of accounts. Um, so what's it like trying to add chart of accounts? Let's see. Um, click here okay so we can enter prior period balances um, so that's nice is it will this give us a list of here we go here's our list of everything so again this is the account ID structure they've set up so a five digit GL number followed by I think they called this what they call it departments I think something like that um, okay uh, so we could, if we wanted to add a new account, here we go, we type in the new ID number, give it a description. Uh, very good. Can we edit accounts? What if we just double click on one? Yeah, we can edit accounts. Uh, so that all looks fairly straightforward. So I don't think maintaining the chart of accounts is a problem. And you can also input beginning balances. Um, okay. Uh, closing the books so let's say it is now 2021 we want to close the books prior to this so to change our accounting period we go up here to our uh, in the right corner here it tells us what accounting period we're in if we click on that it gives us months if we click in the current period um, which this is all, again, this this test drive data is fairly old. It looks like it's all from back in like 2018. But if we click on the accounting period that we want to close, it automatically closes all those accounting periods prior to that. So that's very easy to do. I'm going to go ahead and reset it to where it was. Um, and those are probably the dates we're going to have to use in our sample. Okay, so let's uh, click that. Okay, so that's very easy to lock prior periods. And I'm just going to say we don't want to make any changes here. Okay, excellent. So we're able to change our uh, or lock our prior periods very easily. 
um, add additional users we're in premium so we should be allowed uh, to have up to five users so I think this is under maintain users set up user security so we do have five licenses looks like we can click for a new user John Doe okay so that looks simple enough to create a new user okay looks like we can manage their passwords here we can set a uh, user's rights very good okay now can we import a chart of accounts so I've done some research and found where you can import your chart of accounts not where you would expect it it's not in the chart of accounts function you have to go to file and then they have a separate here import export uh, guide select import export and then we can import you can import or export a lot of different items um, so that's actually really good so uh, chart of accounts is going to be under general ledger chart of accounts and then we could hit import and then it's going to tell us very specifically the information we need to have in the file and we can import it from a, a CSV file so uh, there you go not where you'd expect it but you can certainly get it done and that concludes chapter one of our fit small business case study for sage 50 cloud uh, not user friendly at all but it, it it does everything we need to do so far um, this is obviously very powerful software but I would not recommend anybody using it unless you're an experienced uh, bookkeeper or you're a full-time bookkeeper that you're going to become experienced because this is not something a business owner is going to have time to master along with running their business um, so that's chapter one um, of the fit small business case study <laughs>